Yo, what up guys, this is your boy here, Judah Yuki, giving you another Yu-Gi-Oh! Arc V episode 103 review for you guys. Guys, this episode was honestly really amazing, it was really good. I was really excited when I saw the preview, and when I finally saw the episode, I was like, oh, this episode is just, it's good overall, everything is good, it's setting up the story very nicely for so many different characters, uh, new appearances from... Uh, old slash new characters that I'm about to get into, but this episode was just so good. The episode starts off um, with Yuya, Shun, and uh, the other new characters they introduced. I haven't memorized their names yet, but... Uh, oh, Alan, the boy with the orange hair, the orange spiky weird hair. Uh, and the other girl, I forgot her name, but... Um, they uh, go off to a, a secret location you know, where the resistance is. Uh, they're serving food to people who have, uh, who are still alive from the Academy's attack. And, you know, they're just feeding them and, you know, making sure that they're all taken care of and, you know, fed and all that stuff. And, you know, they're just sitting there talking about uh, catching up and whatnot, I guess. They start talking about how, you know, Yuya looks a lot like Yuto and, you know, he has Dark Rebellion. So then, you know, Alan was like saying, oh, you, you know, maybe you are Yuto because you do have this dragon and this and that. And for some reason, Yuto didn't want Yuya to tell them that Yuto was inside of Yuya and that, you know, they're kind of like sharing, in a sense, kind of like the body, his body. It sounds weird, but yeah, this is Yu-Gi-Oh. That happens quite often, but... Um, so he didn't want, want him to share that, but then Shun kind of defended Yuya saying that, oh, you know, at first I didn't trust him either, but, you know, after, you know, I spent this much time with him and seen his motives, I could tell that, uh, you know, that he's a good guy and that he's not, you know, he's not Yuto, but, you know, that, um, he, he's just a good person and he trusts him. So this goes to show the development of Shun and how... You know, he didn't trust the Lancers at first, he didn't trust anybody at first, and he kind of, like, after time began to trust people, and, you know, and, and it was good, you know, it shows development in his character that he was able to trust more people after that, and, um, so yeah, and then, also, you know, Shun says, you know, Yuya's name, Yuya Sakaki, and then, you know, the girl says Sakaki, like, you know, with a question mark, obviously, because, uh, you know, it sounds familiar to Sakaki Yusho, which they actually mentioned in this episode. And, you know, when Yuya hears of this, uh, he says, oh, what, you know, my father. And, and, and they're like, yeah, he was my teacher. So apparently, you know, Yusho went to the Axis Dimension, I guess about three years ago or so. And he was teaching some people how to duel and how to duel, you know, with fun and smiles and stuff. And... You know, how you can settle all problems with, you know, sm um, smiling and how to use dueling for the right way and all that stuff. You know, his usual skit and stuff. Um, and, you know, that was his purpose going there. And, you know, I guess uh, everybody really loved him there. And, you know, I think Alan said that, oh, yeah, he taught us, you know, he taught us about dueling, you know, for all those purposes. Almost as if he knew that Academia was going to eventually strike. Uh, which actually did happen and kind of made Alan and I guess maybe some other people suspicious about that. And this, all of this stuff, I think, okay, no, 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 never mind. Because um, I guess Yusho was there, yeah, Yusho was there before the Academy attack, which means I don't know if Shun ever actually got a chance to meet Yusho or not, but I would assume he at least knows of him through that because that was before... You can't, I don't know, I don't know, it's complicated stuff, it hasn't all been explained, but either way, um, so, you know, and then Yuya was all happy, he was like, oh yes, oh, my father is alive, he wasn't a coward, he just came to the Axis Dimension, and then Alan was like, no, your father, your father is a coward, he, he, he left shortly before Academy attacked, and, you know, he left us alone here, uh, you know, he didn't fight with us, he didn't protect us or nothing, he just kind of went away, and he called him a coward, and, uh, so, that was pretty interesting. Um, I'm curious to see why he would, you know, leave them kind of, you know, go in and make them all happy and then, you know, and then just leave right before they were going to attack. I don't know why he didn't stay there and fight too. I know he, Yusho has a much bigger plan in this. He has a much bigger role in this story than, than, uh, than it, than, especially in this episode, you can see he has a much bigger role because he's been to the, 
he's he's from the standard as of we know and he's been to the X's and I um has he been to Synchro? And he and, and we know that he's also been to the fusion dimension. So he's been uh, he's been traveling around through dimensions, kinda of doing his own business. So I really wanna know what's his master plan and all this. How did he, you know, find out about the academy and their attacks and like what's going on with him because he's he's playing a really big important role in the story he seems to be this mysterious character who we don't know what he's up to or what he's doing but he seems to be doing stuff uh, he set up a school in the X's dimension and as we find out later in the episode he has a school that he built also in the fusion dimension and in the standard dimension so he's like building schools everyone Everywhere and teaching people how to duel for fun and smiling and all this stuff. So he, he has an ulterior motive. I can't wait to find that out. Uh, and how he's involved with everything. Because this is really interesting. Um, but yeah, so kind of moving forward. Uh, that was the first half of the episode just talking about that. And then the second half of the episode starts off with Yuzu um, in the fusion dimension. You know, she wakes up and she finds out that oh, you know, she's in the fusion dimension. She sees this this boat of kids, you know, waving off to their parents saying, bye, you know, I'll see you later. You know, we're going out to the academy, we're coming back, we'll be strong and this and that. And, you know, they're like giving their, you know, goodbyes and stuff because they're heading off to the academy. So that's how she was able to find out that she was in the fusion dimension because that's where academy is and blah, 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 blah. So, yeah, so that's kind of what happens. Uh, I, I, once you become like 14 years old or so, you get recruited for the academy and you can go there to be... A, um, a top duelist or whatever, you know, uh, the whole, you know, Fusion Dimension worships the Duel Academy because they train amazing duelists and this and that. So I'm guessing that nobody in the Fusion Dimension, other than the people at Academy, really know what their true motives are. And apparently there are also some runaway people from the academy who try to run away from the academy i guess because of their evil ways once they find out and they're like no we don't want a part of this so they try to run away from them and you know so they thought that yuzu was one of those refugees who ran away from the academy so they went after her the guards went after her um so yeah so this is where it gets interesting the guards are chasing her around blah 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 around the city and then um you know she gets she gets cornered off and um, there's this woman in the in the in the robe that's on the boat. We already know who that is. Come on, let's not let's be real. Um, so she comes in. Uh, she comes jumping in in front of Yuzu. Yuzu was actually about to duel and fight the three, which would have been actually really fun and interesting uh, if she had dueled. Because I want to see more of her cards and I want to see her have more of a role. It would have been nice to see her defend herself. But she gets saved by Alexis Rose or Asuka Tenjoin. From the Japanese, yes, Alexis or Asuka is back from GX, and this is a uh, really fun. She comes in, striking in, you know, takes off her robe. She's got a new design. She looks amazing. She looks stunning. She looked great. Like I loved it. Like I was so excited to watch this episode because that preview like sold it off so well. And I was more excited than I thought I would be because when I first heard about Asuka returning to G uh, to Arc V, you know, from a while back, I was like. I, I wasn't sure how to feel about it. I, obviously, I was happy, but not, like, ecstatic. And I wasn't, like, really, like, I was neutral. I didn't know how to feel. But when I saw that preview, all of a sudden, this, oh, God, this inner excitement came from me. And I was just like, yes, she's back. This is great. She looks she looks amazing. I can't wait. And new monsters, new, new monsters and new stuff. I can't wait. I'm so excited. Um... So yeah, I, I guess, you know, deep down inside, I'm a, I'm a GX boy, and somehow it came and surfaced inside of me. Even though I wasn't sure how to feel about her being in the show, I was just like, but it surfaced out inside of me, and I was just hyped. Just absolutely hyped. So she's, uh, so it's a one versus three. So uh, these three, I guess, kind of retired off Academy students who are much older. That's what it seemed like to me. Uh, and they um, started the duel with, with Alexis. She goes first. She summons her Estola Cyber. She sets a back row, which she never uses, which kind of made no sense to me. Um, I watched that duel like three times, and I'm like, well, what happened to that face down card that she said? What was that even for? I'm like, well, like it was so pointless. She might as well have just summoned Estola Cyber and left it like that. I don't know. It was kind of odd. I don't know. I guess the writers forgot about that card or they feel they didn't need it. 
I don't know. I don't know what happened with that. That was weird. But yeah, the guards summoned their not ancient gear monsters, but they actually summoned these new assault dog things or whatever. These machines that look like a bulldog and a hound dog or whatever. And you know, they they fusion summon. They all do the exact same move. All three of them throughout. You know, they one discards two cards, the other one discards th uh, four or three or whatever, and you know, they just have these huge monsters with like 3,000, 4,000, and 6,000 attack on the field, no back row, no protection, it's like, okay, you know, it's obviously set up for Alexis to kill them off in one turn, which is basically what's going to happen, but, uh, so then Alexis goes in, you know, she activates Machine Angel Ritual, so we're like, yes, perfect she's going to use her cyber angels from gx again which is going to be great new ones which is even better it's going to get me really excited for something later so she summons it uh you know this beautiful gorgeous animation for the ritual summon you know showed and that's what i love about arc v you know they're really uh bringing back these old summonings and especially for ritual summoning because ritual summoning is more unique than the other summons because uh they um they each have their own different summoning animation. You know, every card, you know, Black Luster Ritual, Black King, you know, they just, all of them have different types of animation. So if you're going to, you know, put that in the show, if you're going to put rituals in the show, you kind of have to put the effort to make animations for every single ritual spell card. Because it's not like pendulums, all, you know, you set the scales, they're going to be there, the, the blue and everything, and the... The swinging pendulum, like, it's all gonna look the same, the same with Fusion and Axes, it's all gonna look the same, more or less. So, but with Ritual, I, I'm guessing that's why they don't have that many Ritual stuff. Maybe they don't want to put in the extra effort to actually, um, you know, animate all these different Rituals. Because it would take a longer time and a lot of creativity. But either way, it went perfectly and flawlessly. The way they animated it was gorgeous and... It was just perfect. I can't wait to see that even more in the future. See Alexis Duel even more in the future. So she summons her new machine angel. Um, I forgot. I f her cyber angel something. I forgot the name. Ah, I forgot the name. But it's a you know it's a really it's a really good card. Um, three thousand attack. Uh, yeah, three thousand attack level ten. So it's a really good um, effect, and her effect is basically a counter to fusion summoning, just, I guess, obvious. So she can destroy as many fusion material, as, as many fusion monsters on your opponent's side of the field as possible and deal a thousand points of damage for each fusion destroyed. Obvious effect, you know, we all knew she was going to go in and anytime you see a three versus one, you know that that person is just could come in and sweep everything for no reason, you know, it's, it's so predictable, but it was still good, and, you know, and then she can attack up to the number of future monsters that were destroyed, she got to attack three times, she, it has 3,000 attacks, so they only have 3,000 life points left, killed them all in one shot, so, you know, it was like, whoo, one turn kill, so it was uh, really great uh, seeing her again, she takes Yuzo off with her on the boat, takes her to this hidden location somewhere, and somewhere in the fusion of mentioned in some mountain or something, some hidden location where I guess the resistance, not really, but you know, where, where she's hiding out with uh, a lot, yeah, where she's hiding out. And basically, a lot of the people who escape from Academia, uh, you know, they go to this place and you know, to, to fight against them because you know, they didn't like their way, so they ran away and now they're planning to fight against their evil ways and whatnot. So, you know, she takes Yuzu into this hidden room and, oh yes, she tells her that, she tells her that the name of this school is Yusho Duel School, Yusho Duel School. So she's like, wait, Yusho? How could that be possible that there's a Yusho Duel School here in this dimension? And then, you know, she opens the door, she looks through and there's this guy obviously sitting there that looks like Yuya's father. And then, and then Yuzu's like, wait, you're, and then... He, and then it was a close shot of his face. He lifts his head and then he smiles and the episode ends. And that was so perfect. It was amazing. Oh, I got chills. I didn't expect that. I was not expecting that at all. I didn't expect him to show him right now. Like, it was so out of the blue. And just seeing him sitting there on a chair, mad chill. Like, yeah, I'm here. It was good. I'm the boss and whatnot. Like, it was just so cool. It was, 
It was so well done, and he smiled, and it was good. So now we're going to see Yusho play a really big part in the story from now on, which is really great. Finally, I, I have to say, finally. Now we get to see what he's doing, why he's doing it, and I really want to see him do it. He has this amazing ace monster we've seen so many times. It looks so gorgeous to me. It's stunning. I want to know, is that a fusion, Xy, Syngro? What is that? I have no idea what it is. I want to know. It looks so good. It looks like such a stunning monster. I want to see his deck. I want to see him do it. I want to see how strong he is. If he taught so many people how to do and build schools in different dimensions, both fusion, Xyz, and, well, not synchro, but, you know, and, and standard, then he has to be a great duelist. And I hope that this time Yu-Gi-Oh! decides to give the father a much more important role. I noticed since 5Ds, they've been giving the fathers more important roles, sort of. I mean, yes, Yusei's father was already dead, and he didn't really play a role in the main story until, like, you know, the zone fight, but he was kind of like that that drive that was pushing Yusei to, you know, um, repay all the damage that his father's done. So they put more emphasis on parents there, and in Zexo, man, you get to see everybody's parents in Zexo, so, you know... They're focusing more on that, and you, Yuma's father was great. I really liked him. I uh, would have loved to see him duel, but he did give his deck to Yuma, so that makes sense. Um, but he still did play an overall big role, setting up the setting up the uh, not the numbers and the asteroids in different locations and all that stuff. Um, and you know, he set up the story. He did a good job. But now in RV, it seems like they're like, all right, bam, let's take him one more step ahead. Now let's make him more involved in the story. Let's make him a great duelist. Blah blah blah, and this and that. So now, I, I'm just happy to see Yusho finally here. I'm glad that they're not gonna toss him aside or make them, him this mysterious character that we don't see until the very end of the series. And it's like, oh look, you know, I've been around. Blah blah blah. No, I want him to play a huge big role in this and that's what he's gonna do right now so uh, can't wait for that it was a great episode Alexis was beautiful and you know it was great to see her machine angels again and you know s Cyber and Cyber Prima were there too you know flashbacks and stuff it, it was all good it was all great stuff uh, I, I can't wait for all that um, so for uh, also the preview for next week, we get to see this mysterious duelist who has something against Yuya, and the episode's called um, something Hero D, which is obvious. We all know that's Edo Phoenix or Astro Phoenix from the dubbed, and he's gonna be using these new D hero monsters, from what it seems like. Uh, so that's gonna be really fun to see. Oh God, and. Uh, According to Wiki or whatever, he's from the fusion dimension, so he's going to be fusing. And they showed the animation in the preview, so that's not a spoiler. So he's going to be fusing, so he's from the fusion dimension, and he's apparently this high-ranking commander, and this and that. So I'm going to... And he hates Yusho also, so I can't wait to see what's going on there. Uh, it's going to be a really fun episode next week. Um, this week was great, and next week he's going to keep picking up, and I have a feeling that from this moment on, she's going to keep picking up. Picking up the pace. Um, so, definitely more RV to come. Uh, this episode was so much fun. I'm, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, uh, I won't, I don't know if I'll keep on doing reviews. I get pretty lazy. Hopefully, I get enough excited about the episodes that I'm like, yes, I gotta do it just like today. And I'm like, yes, all right, let me get this. Stop being lazy and do a review. Hopefully, I get the motivation to keep on doing this. Uh, I wanna keep doing this, especially now the story is getting continuously even better and better so show your support uh like the video comment below what you guys think what was your favorite part of the episode what are you looking forward to seeing you know just have a fun discussion below you know be friendly to each other just enjoy yourselves and uh yeah guys that's uh that's the review gotcha